Tasha going, everybody. Check this out. We got ourselves a nice little uh, 2013 Razor 170 that we picked up for, well, let's say a good deal, but it was a fair price, whatever. I just skimmed her by with trading on some work and some dollars. So, um, anyhow, what uh, we're going to do here is we're going to do a uh, complete maintenance. So, one over on this whole complete machine here, we're going to go over it one bit by bit and do everything that we can to her to. Got her running a little better. I noticed in the colder weather that she wasn't starting up real well. And overnight in the shed, she, she started up a lot better. So we're going to go over and we're going to do some maintenance to her. And we're going to see if we can get her running a lot better and see uh, how far we go with this without spending too much money and still uh, maybe turn a little bit of a profit on it. And at the very least, well, the kids will get to have some fun with it in the meantime. So, <laughs> All right, everybody. Check this out. So uh, first things first, we decided to uh, take the bed off here. Bada bing, bada boom. Make our lives pretty easy to work with. Didn't need to bore you guys with all that. So now we accessed our air breather, air box, and I mean, man, that doesn't look like it's ever been cleaned once in its life, probably. Oh, look at that air filter. My fucking Lord. What a sin. Um... So we're going to get that out of there, we're going to get that cleaned out, and we'll try to get a new air filter for this. Might actually even have one kicking around here, but no, it's probably not the same as this one. Anyways, talk for myself. Um, yeah, so we're going to start with that. We're going to clean up our air filter and get, probably replace that, because that one there is crappy. We're going to get a spark plug that lives right down here on the side of the engine here. You guys can all see that if you were to... Be looking at it with the bed off and be a little harder to spot but she's down there anyways you can see where she goes in there no farting her out at I, found, I think i'm gonna come in from the top there's no real room to get at her you really need to come at her from the top here Five eighths, perfect. So you know that a five eighths is going to fit the spark plug of your Razor 170. She might not be easy to get out. And you could uh, potentially break the plug. Then you're not loving life. I also notice how the uh, you can use a wrench. <laughs> I never even fucking thought of that. But uh, for tighter spots, I'll show you when I tighten this. Looks like here. Well, it's not too bad. For a plug that's been in there, focus, come on now. For a plug that's been in there for a while, there we go. She actually don't look too bad. She's got some black carbon deposit, but for the most part. Oh. Okay, so for our spark plugs, along with uh, our NGK Sport, the copper core as per usual, Part number that they call for for this machine is a CR6 HSA. They come two in a pack, so you got a spare. These are carbureted engines, so they're known for following a plug here and there. So this doesn't hurt to have a spare plug. <laughs> All right, so before you go and you place a spark plug into any machine, any vehicle at any time, even though it says pre-gapped on the package, don't matter. Always check your gap before putting in your spark plug you can put in a brand new spark plug go out have a completely shitty running machine you really don't know why and you're like oh it didn't fix my problem but maybe it was just spark plug and you just put in a badly gapped spark plug <laughs> so um in here Polaris recommends for the gap on this to be in between point 
0 0.024 and 0 0.028 so we're just gonna double check you know to make sure that we're in those lines here and you know and, and the way to check is you just put your feeler in get you close up here you'll see what I mean here by the numbers see this is 0 0.024 Zero two six. I don't. My my gauge don't go up to zero two eight. But uh, here, hopefully, we can show you well. So what you're looking for is try to harder <laughs> see through here. Is you're looking for this little plate to pass between your electrode and your plate. Be careful not to get wild with it and bend it. But it should just fit through. And have a little bit of drag not much at all you know you don't want to be able to have to force it through like even this one here she's she's pretty pretty good at zero two point two six with the thicker one a little more drag so we know we're good here our gap is good but I mean you just never know maybe at the factory or on the way in the shipping, the package was dropped and the spark plug somehow the gap got out of whack. And you just, you always want to double check that, make sure. It'll make your life even easier. Because if you grab a three quarter inch wrench, on the side of the back, the spark plug for odd, hard to get spaces. It's made just for that. Finding the hole in the dark. <laughs> Well, so it only calls for 11 foot pounds of torque, so we're not going to go nuts on this. It's a spark plug. Not uh, holding anything into place here. Back it down here. The size of the drain bolt on here I found is uh, 17 millimeter. Um, socket here. Number. Some pretty gold. We can stop. There we go. Here's the uh, screen that filter that they use. You just gotta clean that out and put that back in. Shoes all stuck in there. Nothing big, not major. So you guys can all see in case you didn't pay attention when you pulled this out. We got three pieces here. So you get your cap, you got everything all cleaned out here. Then you get your spring. See the bevel part of your spring sits in your cap. And then your, uh, filter here goes down into your spring like so so that when you push that up she's going to do her job like so all right we're gonna stick this guy back in there and we'll be good to go we're go ahead we're gonna fill her up uh, it says it takes uh, 1.1 quarts 1.1 liters whatever you want to call it for the fuck you are in the world Make a difference to you, I guess. But anyways, it takes 1.1 bottles. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna dump that in there. We're gonna get that going. Uh, this is what I picked up. Cracked tire. Just has some mystic. JT4 10W40 four cycle oil. I mean, it's uh, basically all this little machine here requires. Doesn't need nothing fancy. These little engines here, 1040. They they love the 1040. So we're gonna drop this guy back down on the jack here. Do that one more. Spark plug. 
So we're pretty good there. We know we're going to be good on that front. Um, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to treat the fuel. Uh, what I got here is I'm going to try some sea foam. Uh, it's not something I really use too much, but I mean, whatever, it can't hurt. That's whatever gas is in there. Now, you see that little fucking screw right there at the bottom of your bowl? That's how you drain the old gas out of your carburetor. Whatever your kid ingests a little bit of water, goes through a water puddle hard or something, and all of a sudden it bogs down and don't want to start for a bit, and you don't know why. You just take a flathead screwdriver and you just crack this guy open and you let the gas drain out. With the potential water. I don't know if you guys can see that drain, but I can see it. Anyways, we're going to let that drain for a minute here. Some of that excess gas go. And we'll shut the, uh, shut the fuel off. And then we'll just wait till she runs herself out. There she goes. It doesn't take long. We'll close her back up and then we'll, uh, we'll run that. Anyways, it'll help. Get some of that uh, stuff in there a little bit quicker. So, seems that the drain bolt for the uh, transfer case differential, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Why they even did this? I just mean the, Seems to be this guy right down there. Right at the bottom of your chain down there. Straight underneath there. So we're going to get at him and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll let you know what the factor is here. Put a skid plate in front of my way so it's not going to be easy to get at that and drain it properly. Alright, so well, we got that draining. If you guys can see it, she's coming all off the uh, corner of the <laughs> into my drain pans. Not too bad. She had some water in her. So she wasn't too too bad though. She wasn't too, too horrible. She did have a little bit of water in her. So good time to change her out. This is a 17 millimeter, by the way. The drain bolt is the wrench. Okay, so now for filling up our transmission, you guys can see here the little twist throttle, twist out bolt here we had to remove. Um, it's quite possible. Yeah, this funnel here is going to be a little not quite small enough to fit in there so I'm gonna have to come up with a little trick. I transferred the fluid into this here bottle here with this spout so it'll make it easier to pour in there. <laughs> there we go. Nice. Seems to be working nicely. And the thing is, is when this is full She'll just pour out of the hole here. See, I overfilled her on purpose, and you see all the excess will just run back out of there. Once uh, she's done running out of there, just pop the plug back on, she'll be good to go. So, what we're going to be doing next here is we're going to be changing out our steering box on this Razor 170 because. Uh, this is one there here that I grabbed off of eBay for a decent price. It wasn't uh, this one here. She's a bit done here. It's uh, hard to tell here, but when you're steering with it, uh, the uh, oh, there it is. I can see it. See that shaft there? That knuckle there is all gone. She's all going sideways. She ain't steering very good. Had that much play before you even got anything doing anything. So we're gonna get this changed out. Hopefully that'll sure that problem and make it a lot much easier sell for when we sell it so I mean pretty simple we just got to remove the one bolt here for this shaft here and two bolts here for each of the ball joints or tie rod ends I should say not ball joints stupid me but uh, those should be pretty simple and we may also have to come up into here I guess and possibly yeah, we'll probably have to unbolt the steering wheel completely just so that we can lift the shaft up 
to get it off of the off of the steering box I would imagine uh, that shouldn't be too much we'll get right to her and we'll get that changed out we'll let you know how she goes here as we go along okay so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go right ahead and I'm just going to unbolt the uh, steering wheel the whole shaft right out of there so I can move the whole thing up and down I think that'll make my life the, the most easiest um, pretty sure it's just a 12 millimeter 12 mil socket that's all you need or a wrench whichever one you want to get in there that works This bolt right here on the shaft. Let's see if we get this guy off here with not too much trouble. <laughs> get it turned right. It's 12 millimeter again here. You guys can see. Seems like a lot of these bolts are just 12 mils here. Came out really easy. Uh, shit. Piece out of the way here. Alright, so now we're going to work at taking off the uh, mounting bolts here. Um, I think there are three. These are also 12 millimeters here. And what's nice is all these come with their own pre made, pre welded nuts, so you don't have to grab a wrench and hold anything anywhere. To see. Seems to be fairly quick. Straightforward. All right, so with this one tie rod here finally removed, I was able to turn this down that way. One way here. I was able to get a socket on this last bolt with an extension. This is nice. Alright, so here's a close-up view of the two different uh, steering shafts, steering boxes here. You can tell there's some physical differences, obviously. Um, looks like this here bolts in a little deeper than there, so you might, uh, if you don't have a skid plate or something on her, I'm not sure exactly how that goes, or you might want to just keep an eye out for that, make sure that your bolt don't stick out too far wherever it's coming out. But, I mean, besides that, everything looks to be like it mounts up the same here. Same mounting locations. Uh, you can tell here, this one here, the, oh, I already, I pushed the shaft back and I made it tight again. The seal was popped out of her. It made the shaft really loose and she had a lot of mud inside of there. So either way, she would have had to have been taken out, and popped open, taken care of. But that's really all it was. Oh no, sorry, I was looking at the wrong shaft. Haha, <laughs> fucking dumb. You can tell, right here, sorry. This is all inside of here. So the bearings all toast inside of there. Most likely replaceable. So we're going to hold on to this and we'll open this up probably. And if this is uh, easily rebuildable with just a bearing and a seal, well, we'll probably just, uh, and it's cheap enough, maybe we'll just open this up, rebuild it, and put it back for sale. <laughs> Perfect. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to work on getting this guy installed and we'll keep trucking along. Okay, so final update on this steering rack here. So what I did was, is uh, because the shaft part here was different sizes and stuff. So I put the tie rods on the top of this one, which is kind of pretty close to where they were originally. Just had to flip them around. I had to redo an alignment here on this. So whatever, she's pretty close. It's not uh, 100%, but it's, uh, it's an off-road buggy, I mean. Not meant to be perfect. <laughs> but anyways, that's pretty good. So we're going to start getting the front end on, back all up on this. Hopefully, maybe I'll look online tonight, see if I can't find a bumper for this instead of trying to fix that old cracked up one there. But uh, no, we'll start getting everything back put on this here because she's starting to run pretty good. And 
we'll, we'll take her for a little test here and make sure she steers good and everything but I think she's pretty good now we got our reserve bottle mounted back up so she's not dangling no more so perfect stick along Alright, I got a new battery for it charging up right there, brand new. We're going to replace the old battery even though I charged it up. I mean, if you charge it up, it works. But... It doesn't hold the charge forever and it gets a little weak, so we're going to put a brand new battery in there. Well, it starts right up. She moves pretty good. We're going to be cleaning all this crap out of here. We're going to make it look all new. Can anyways, in a good part of it. Okay, fix that front bumper. It's a nice little machine though. Just don't have fun with it. Sure, it's pretty decent. 